So we're back with this. Um, let's continue doing a little bit of more VGA stuff. First, I'm going to fix a couple of things. First is, um, so the other day, um, when I just, it's not that I found, it's kind of I suddenly remembered that the VGA uh, components, RGB, are 6 bits instead of 8. And I just used this formula, which is mathematically accurate. But then somewhere on YouTube, uh, sorry, I don't remember your name. Um, mentioned that he proposed uh, a different approximation because in reality, I mean, if we're going to convert eight bits into six, uh, we're going to lose information, right? So, although this is mathematically accurate, uh, there are better approximations to this. And then someone on Mastodon mentioned that yes absolutely this is correct but in reality uh the problem with this is that um the values are not evenly distributed uh whilst if we divide this by four sorry by four by shifting to this to the right um it's going to look mostly the same. So this is the thing we had last day. Uh, but the distribution of the colors is going to be better because otherwise with the mathematically accurate formula, um, we only get, for example, one top value of 63 because with six bits, we go from zero to 63. Um, so yeah i think this one I, I think they're right this one works better so we're going to use it so uh, i don't need to do the date right it's enough uh hello jason uh yeah this is uh neo beam with a few plugins not that many actually but yeah a few of them cool so this should make things better also jason how are you doing <laughs> um yeah okay so that's one thing and the other thing that I couldn't get to the bottom of last day um, and it was a little bit slow and boring me you know watching me hitting the wall with my head uh, constantly was in the when we were uh, converting the so embedding the, the binary data into the into the X file and I was trying to get LD, the linker, to do the right thing, but it turns out it was easier than that because we can use a strip and uh, with a strip um, we can see the problem with this is that I don't really trust uh, what is going to happen, right? So if we do, for example, so let's do an example. So if we do this, and we do R, B, binary, and we use, for example, the readme, right? Okay, uh, why not? Let me see what I'm doing. What is complaining? Oh, sorry, oh, bad start, okay. So we generate this readme file here, right? And we could be embedding in the binary. Now, if we do inspect the readme file, the, the file to embed, um, what I was not expecting at all is this environment symbol. 
And because it's not dependent on the name of the file, it means that when I try to embed two, two different objects, two different binaries, we're going to create a duplicated entry for the symbol environment and it's not going to work, right? So last day, what I was trying to do, it was trying to see how I could remove that. And turns out with a strip, I can, but if we want, I mean, personally, it doesn't matter because I'm using the version of GCC that I'm using. So this is how it works. And I just fixed it for the version I have. I made my game, I release it and just forget about it. Right? So I can put a note in the readme. You need to use GCC 1210. And that's the version that is going to work. It could work in others, but if it doesn't work, I don't care. Uh, but because, you know, I'm sharing the source code and making it open source and everything. Yeah, my concern is that if I uh, filter out Environ and you happen to have a different version of GCC that for whatever reason adds other symbols that we don't expect, it's not going to work. So thinking about it, we're going to use, uh, so W allow us to use this uh, asterisk here as a wildcard. And with uppercase K, we are going to filter everything that doesn't match this, anything that doesn't match this. So basically I'm asking for underscore, the name of the file we created in this case, uh, readme.md, uh, right? I just, although I'm doing this by hand, so so in reality is if we look at the one we added for now, which is palette, it's going to be because I create a file that is called palette without extension, right? So it's going to be binary. So I'm going to search for underscore palette underscore, which is what we're doing here, and everything else will be filtered out, which means that. You know, if in the future environment is not there, fine. But if there is something else, any other symbol, uh, we're going to filter out, filter it out. So this is a good solution, although it's not great. Um, but I think it's fine, and I still think it's better than the generated includes. I guess. Well, better. I don't know. I mean, the include file works because I have used that extensively in my AB games and it works. It's just that you include the file, so it has to, I mean, I can't even show you how, how it is. So um, let's look at hyperdrive, for example. So in my AB projects, I have a directory called generated when I add a stuff that is being generated, right? And so basically have a Python script that generates the include file. If the symbol local is defined, then includes the data. Otherwise, it defines that as an extern uh, variable. So it means that I can include font.h as many times as, as I need in my, in my project, but only in one file that I usually call data, for example, I include this with defining local at the beginning. And yeah, it works, uh, but it's kind of... Uh, besides, if, if you start um, embedding a lot of data like that, you're going to make the life of the compiler harder because, you know, that include has to go over the uh, C preprocessor, has to go, it has to be compiled. So I think this is better because basically, we are saying, uh, yeah, the linker is creating a binary, is, is making the symbols that are not that different to what I uh, generate. The only benefit of the other way is that you can create the structure that you, that you really need. So sometimes, let's look at another example. For example, in uh, maybe this one, Brill rig, did I do something? Yeah, for example, in the case of the player. So, because you can generate anything, you know, it's an include file. 
so I can have a raise. So uh, yeah, so I can have a raise of for each frame, and then I can have here an index that points to all the frames, which is very convenient, right? Because I can just say, oh, can I get the frame one, which is this one here, right? And see that these frames are repeated as well because it's an animation. So it's one, zero, one, two, three, right? That's the work animation, basically. Um, so yeah, this is convenient because I can say, oh, give me frame zero. Otherwise, I would have to include this anyway. And I will have to maintain this this index by hand saying uh, for example it will be binary uh, player start right and then frame one will be player start plus 192 right so yeah it has its benefits but anyway I have decided I'm going to do it differently here and let's see if I change my mind later Hopefully not. Right, so, so this is going to fix, uh, so remove or filter out any uh, unwanted symbol. Yeah, and I think I made a change, yeah, because the, the D, DBMI uh, the protected mode uh, client has um, so has a swap file. And yeah. Cool. So that is bug, bug fixing done, I think. Um, so we got the palette so let's do name data now so in the pal and pics pics for the pixels right so png to pixels dot o whatever it's not the, uh, an object name for the Pixel. Oh, okay. Oh, it was correct. So that was the type I introduced now. Which one is this one? This part? Oh, no, yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, okay, so this is the pixels one, right? Okay, yes. So PNG to pixel data dot o. o. So image to convert object image to pixel data is going to be pretty much the same. So, but instead of getting the pal the palette, we get the data. So. Oh, why did I open it with? Did it open this? Hmm. Oh, maybe I pressed something. Yeah, I see, uh, Jason. I'm using um, LSP with an LSP server for Python. Uh, so it looks like a, an IDE, right? And I don't know, I did something. <laughs> and it opened. I don't know, maybe. I... Yeah, well, this is a different thing. This is a plugin I have when I'm editing a big file and there are a lot of issues. It's kind of convenient to navigate it. Uh, issues like that. So, uh, okay, so get data seems to be correct. Is it? No information available. Uh, so, it may not be correct. So, image open. So, so image, what is image? It doesn't know. That's a shame. Anyway, I think this is okay. Uh, 
I mean, we, we can we can actually we can actually try it, right? We can say thing, and then we can do tools, PNG picks, picks, and then we say sprites and whatever we're going to agree. Uh, imagine car object. Uh, what? Oh, because it may be a generator, right? The image can be quite big. Yeah, there you go. So that's the image. And those are palette indices, could be. Uh, what? It didn't. Oh, it's one single line. Ooh. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a lot. Ooh, there you go. So this should be something that is not zero at the beginning. Yeah, okay, so those are the colors that we use. I think it's fine. And that's fine, okay. So yeah, so get data against the data and because we are forcing it to be an indexed image, um, it gives us the, the in palette, palette indexes. So this is going to be the same, uh, exactly the same. So we write the palette data, then we create the binary object, we strip the things that we don't like, and that's all I think. With a nice CLI interface, cool. So. Uh, let's include the sprites and huh let me think okay no we don't need to do it like this because okay so we we need to do a specific object for the uh, palette. So I think doing it like this is fine because we need, so, okay, let me think how I explain this. Okay, so basically uh, we can have as many images as we want, right? But they are going to share the same palette, I think, uh, unless we don't want to, which is fine, but for now, we're going to assume that all the images share the same palette. So by including the objects here, the make file is going to go here and going to extract the palette once, right? But for the rest of the images, what we probably want to do is something like this. Uh, for any PNG, I want to create an object file. And what it's going to do is PNG picks. And just like this. So the the PNG is going to be the input, and the output is going to be the same uh, with the O. So now, uh, so we have sources, and then we can have images. Why not? And basically, just any PNG. I mean, at the moment, any .c that I drop in the source directory, it will be processed. So what I want now is that any PNG in the data should be processed automatically added. So we can do the same thing we did here with the source, I guess. And that should be it. Do make clean. If I do a make, ooh, it didn't work. Why well, didn't work? Mm, it's PNG dot oh, right? Mm. 
Oh, I see. It's because of these. Is it? Right? Uh, how do I how do I fix that? Mm. Yeah, because with the wild card, it's going to be the names. Hmm. I don't know how to do this. So. Can I do something like when this work? Maybe. Yeah, there you go. It's because it has this. And then can we see the objects? Uh, no, another one. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to get the sprites. Uh, I don't know how to fix that. So the problem is that it's going to create the. So oh, why not? Mm, no, but I don't want dot. I don't want objects in there. Hmm. I don't know how to do this. In so I may just not do it. Well, in here, I guess I can do so because it's going to be this, right? Can I do this? Uh, yeah, but this this is shell, right? So I can do shell. Can I do this? Can I do this? I probably can. But it's going to be. It's going to make things complicated. Yeah, but it's looking for. No, I'm confused. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's doing the it's translating that. So we need to do it here. Oh man. Well, that's a shame. How can I do that differently? Uh, there must be a way of So this gets the list of the images. And, and this line here is, is making a substitution of .png dot or o. Uh, but okay. Um, there must be a way of doing this. There must be a way. There must be a way. Yeah, okay. So here they su suggest doing a pattern substitution. This is overkill. That's, this is not how you do it. You don't need to do all that. Yeah, you don't need to do this. Really. Um, yeah, that's how you do it. This is how you do it. But then I wonder. So this is how you do it. Are they providing links to the condition? No, they don't. Of course they don't. Is this the one? Understanding. He wants to understand. I want to understand as well. So I can change it and make it. Hmm. Okay, this is interesting. 
uh, is it? Uh, so can I do can I do something like this? No, this is exactly the same. No, and actually, it's the, it's the other way around. Oh, excellent. I think that will do it. Uh, no, it's not going to do it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, no, it's not going to work. No, because it's always going to be that. Okay, mm, let's not wait. Let's move on. Don't waste time with this. Uh, Oh man, maybe I should use the sub string and uh, do the substitution, uh, but I need to remo remove the data as well. Ah, substitute from text to text, pattern substitution, variable pattern replacement. Suffix replacement. Okay, that might, that might work. Okay, so uh, this is correct, and then dot PNG substitutes to uh, yeah yeah pattern and the replacement. So okay. Look at the substitution references. Okay, so whatever PNG. Uh, Okay, that's getting better now. Neural target sprites. Um, all right. So, so close, isn't it? So for images, now we have replaced data, data, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I guess, yeah, but we don't want to do that because it's not all dot .ops, right? It's only the ones that end with PNG. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So... So this is looking good now. But the problem I have now is that <sighs> it's not detecting the PNG, but it should, right? Because the images just still have it. So if I do uh, not like that, it is uh, not like that. So that is correct. Then it's telling you the object, and it's yeah, but it doesn't know that it has to find the PNG in the other directory. Huh. Yeah, it's the same problem.
Mm -mm. Oh, so close. Um, reading rules, yeah, but the chances that I can find what I want. The phone, da, 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 da. No. Uh, Study Patarus. All right. Okay, okay. So we can get the image objects. Ah, this is, this is going to work. So, so much fun, actually. So, there you go. So that gives me the image objects, right? And then here I can say for image objects right uh, whatever PNG sorry whatever object the source is going to be whatever PNG Ha ha ha! Okay, um, so let's clean up this a little bit. Actually, I don't need this to be like that. Cool. So, yeah, it's doing it. Excellent. And it's not going to do anything different, but because we haven't changed anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, but this is now including. This is including now. The spreads. Okay, so for the embedded data. I think there is a way of doing this now without typing all this manual thing, I think. So the palette and sprites. Did I call it sprites? Uh, yeah. So, uh, maybe we should include also, do we need to include the palette M and the size? Actually, what is size? Is what type of it's a thirty two bit, right? So I'm not completely sure what is that, but hmm, hmm, hmm. Anyway, oh, and it goes in the data section, so they are not constant, I think. Are they? It's the data section. So contents allocate load read only. Ah, oh, read only. There you go. There you go. Read only. Perfect. So it's const. Const. Perfect. I like it. So, I mean, we could be including the size. Is that useful? Uh, 
Maybe. Is that true what I'm saying? Ah, uh, yeah, I need to include the... It doesn't complain about it. Uh, but it's true, though. Let's do something. Let's... Stop this from happening for now. So... I to the padded size because I know what is the actual size of the padded size. So... Is that what we spent? What we spent? Okay, so... Uh, it's not... Um, Log in together? Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> it did crash. So so what what is that? So binary palette size. So what is that really? Uh, it looks exactly exactly that like the other, right? So could be something like this, and we can do no and so i guess it is array values i don't understand why we'll do that but oh it could be the size now nah, keeps crashing I don't know what is this value. Um, I don't know what it is, really. So... I mean, it should be affected to read, right? Like. Can that can can this be right? No, it's not because it crashes. So I don't know what it is. Binary palette size. start is size well it's doing constant in and we just saw that it's not what we spot ah could be this could it be that did I I'm saving by the way It doesn't like it. Uh, you can say the position independence and the banner is considered the correct value since it's made relocated. Since PA is only the default this day is valid point uh, is on by default this day. The valid point wait wait wait. The problem arises because 
Position the pen executable. El executable is already in the same memory address, which is the binary. Ba, 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 ba. The binary JP size is not an integral value, it's a pointer. Aha! And they also get relocated when they are loaded. If you compile your code with option no pi, won't be relocated. Okay. What does it mean? Okay. <laughs> Let's go through with no pi. No pi. This is interesting because we may be finding stuff that it will crash later. No, that doesn't help. So it's saying there is a pointer. So I can do this. And and here we do this. Uh, no. I didn't say too quick. No. So the pie is not. It says you compile your code. Mm. Similar to enter. It's an loops address symbol. In other, uh, in order to get the size, you need to take the address of it and cast to replace. Only works the selling uh, pick no pie. Okay. Or linking statically. Yeah. Well, we are linking statically, right? Right. So you telling me that I do. If I do a static, it's going to make a difference. No, it doesn't. Of course not. And it's an address because it's a symbol. Right? Uh, honestly, I don't know. And at this point, I'm starting to not care at all. It's not making any difference. Well, this is a rabbit hole. I think I'm going to stop wasting time with this. So it's saying... Uh, I mean, my problem is that eventually... If... I don't get this right, things are going to start to crash and do funny things later, so yeah, but this is not it's not doing anything. So I don't know really. No matter what I do. So I wonder, could be this? No, that should be fine. And why will it crash? I think it's crashing because uh, the address we're getting here is not good at all. But I don't know which is the one that is doing it wrong. Separator, what are you talking about now? Yeah, there's something that is not liking in the C class when I'm doing this. So this can go here. And potentially, uh, as a test, go here. But I think the pi is for linking, right? 
No, it doesn't like it. Yeah, it's not related to that. Uh, well, it really doesn't matter. No. I broke it in a different place. Okay, so login is an integer. Oh, fine. So, can I do... And not in the linking, and then study. <sighs> yeah, the peak here, it breaks the, the dependencies. And if you do this, it's not too good. So I don't think we can get the size, I'm afraid. It could be something related to to DJ GPP maybe. I have no idea. But clearly well what I think this guy is doing is probably not right. And they tell him that, telling him that or oh, her that it's not a good idea. It's telling them that it's not a good idea. Then it's doing some blah 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 here. No. So Oh my default these days. Yeah, but I don't think this is the case because this is for dollars really. I don't I don't think so. Well, or link it statically, but that static is not doing any difference either because Because this isn't this is DOS. So the linker is probably Latin. When I say static, yeah, like what do you expect? It's always going to be static. Anyway, so we got to the conclusion that we are not going to put, include the size. Well, that's already a little bit of a downside compared with the headers. Uh, anyway, okay, back to normal. Uh, all right, okay, so this is now, um, um. we did here was yeah um, uh, what else um, da, 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 da. these two go together I think yes because So this is basically move the um, cool. cool. 
cool, 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 cool. So I think the PNG bits is done. Now for the JSON, I don't know if we're going to use JSON files. So uh, 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 uh. we can we can leave it there for now and keep doing some bits related to the VGA. So things that we need for the VGA support is oh by the way yeah I've been thinking about this as well. Um, I mean, I'm assuming a lot of things because I don't know how this works. Um, and I just realized that in the things I'm assuming is... So, um, I don't know what is the timing. So, I don't know how long do I have in a frame. So, I think it's very likely because in... And also, I don't know what, I'm, what, what type of game I'm going to do. And, well, I have some ideas, but depending what I do, um, I might not have time to draw everything nicely after V-Sync. So I was thinking that perhaps it would be useful to do, you know, go for it and, and implement a double buffer with hardware using the, um, the different planes that you get in the VGA. Um, yeah, but that's a little bit more complicated than what I wanted to do. So yeah, that's probably something we need to do. But what I need to do, 100% sure, is be able to wait for uh, V-Sync. So I think I'm going to do that now. Another thing, another thing I need to do is a tick-down counter to measure time because... Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know either you know, what is the frequency of those interrupts? Because I've been reading around and it looks like the VGA doesn't have an interruption on VSync, uh, which is interesting because I, I think all the 8-bit systems I, I've been programming for, all of them have at least one interrupt that is linked to VSync. So uh, if you're working on a PAL system, you have an interruption every 50 hertz, right? 50 times per second. Uh, but in here, there's no interruption. We can still check. We can still do something similar because what I have seen that some people do is that they 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 reprogram the the peak the programmable interrupt control or something like that. I mean, that might not be the right the real name or I'm saying something stupid, but I think you can reprogram the, the so you can generate an interrupt uh, instead of using the regular with the, the tick, which is just to update the clock, right? The time in your computer. So you can reprogram that and you can sync it with the VSync and you can generate an interrupt every time that the VGA updates the screen. And also keeping track of time because you need to update the clock as well. Uh, so, but that's too complicated, I don't want to do that. And also I don't think it works well in some specific cases. So, but at least I want to measure those sticks, I think. It depends on the frequency, but by measuring those ticks, those, those interrupts, I can count the ticks and I can tell, well, uh, if I want to play the game, whatever, 25 times per second, 30, 30 times per second, so 30 frames or 25 frames or whatever, um, I can count those. And if my code is too fast, I can wait. So the game always moves at the same speed, which is what, what I do in the 8-bit uh, microcomputers. So at least we probably want to do that. And, and then when we finish waiting, we can still wait for VSync to start. And so yeah, it's kind of syncing with VSync.
Although, because we don't have an interrupt, it means that it's going to be, it's going to be wasting CPU. We're going to be waiting in a loop until that happens anyway. But I think it's okay because it's dark, right? It's not really multitasking or anything. So, yeah, those two things I need to do. And for the blitter, yeah, that's what I'm thinking now. If I really want to do the work of doing a simple blitter, um, without really double buffer by hardware because I don't, so what I don't want to do is, is by software because you know dumping 64k every frame is not going to work so my initial idea is that I was going to draw only the bits that change on the screen but then depending on the game I'm going to make and it's very likely that I'm going to make a shooter because that's what I want to do uh -huh. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know, because I don't know what I mean. So, it's probably better if I do the back buffer. And also, it will make it more portable if later I want to get, you know, sub the functions with SDL or whatever and, and do it for, you know, for PC or, or whatnot. So, yeah. Okay, let's do the VGA sync uh, first. Um, that didn't work. Okay, so um, do I have information about that here somewhere? Oh, right. So this is the handler for the ticks. Shall we do this? Actually. Hmm. Ah, let's do this. Uh, no, can we do this without the VGA? Yes, we can without the. Okay, let's do the the VSync first. And I think some of this was actually doing some VSync somewhere. Somewhere there was VSync. It was here. Where it was doing some VSync. Trace. Okay, so this one is waiting. Okay. So this is waiting until the VSync ends, the previous one. Because obviously, when you check, it could be when the VGA is halfway updating the screen. So you need to wait until that has finished so this input and this and is don't is not true anymore and then you also need to wait until it starts and this is a way of doing it um uh, let's look a little bit of assembler and we can i mean we're going to get to the same conclusion right so i don't know Palette fading. These people have to have. Oh no! You know where it could be. Registers and palette, right? So fade loop. Pum, 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 pum. Huh? This is the no VGA Rex. Okay. Oh no! This is just showing us the all the registers. That's not what I want. I just want an example, please. So, fade loop. Auto loop. Uh, dun 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 dun. Uh, palette size. No, well, this is not helpful. I don't want to read all the registers. I was expecting, perhaps. So set this blah blah blah. Like, do they have a way to sync somewhere? Let's put pixel. Yeah, I mean Pascal. Interesting. Uh, animation, perhaps. 
some of these had to have the go to do the wave of the sink, right? Somewhere. Okay, white retrace. There you go. And it's probably the same thing that this guy is doing. Of course. Because so input status input status one is 3DA. 3DA. There you go. And it, uh, it's doing an AND with uh, 8 bit. So that is likely to be. So input the status. Better trace. There you go. So this is the code. I mean, we can just do this. So. So it's going to be so three DA dot C in here. And that's going to be easy. Well, B and it's going to be you know what the friends are doing here which is 3d8 a and a so while that is true oh wait a minute It's not zero. Yeah, well, this is true. Sorry, it's an end. It's going to be looping here. And then what it does. The opposite. This is what this guy is doing, right? Where, where are you? Yeah. So guess then don't get. Yeah. And that's how you wait for vSync. So if we go to main head here, uh, we can say wait vSync. Yeah. And will that make a difference? Yes, it makes a difference. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, because we probably got, I just copied the, the wrong 3D A. I mean, this is a shame because I think I would prefer if. Because. So, the set 80, for example, you do a hold, right? And if you do a hold with the interrupts enabled until the next P sync, that's it. But here we need to okay so i think that is a clear you know well clear i can see it. so there is some thing when i do it with it without that wow so that one the first one it was see there was a like a i'm not sure if the video is capturing that but like a bleep of of dark yeah so yeah there is still in quite a lot actually uh but when we wait for the physique with for b sync that disappears it really doesn't matter how quick i'm doing it think Uh, where is that blinky at the end? 
Uh, because we set mode 3 and close the frame buffer without cleaning the screen. So that means that this. That means that it's going to lose. So the hello dose that we had in, in the corner. Oh, we can see it for, for just just a bit. Anyway, so this is okay, wait a minute, because we have the DJ missing. So yeah. Well, that was easy, right? Uh, so... Again, it's kind of a pain that there is not an interrupt, but... Cool. Uh, what else we can do today is that it's quick and easy. Mm, I mean, the tick counter can be interesting. Let's do that one. Oh, yeah, someone share. Uh, who was? Oh, I forgot now her name. So she, she made a game for the Godot. Uh, for a Godot game jam, Godot or Godot, whatever you pronounce that, Godot, I'm going to say Godot. And uh, she used this palette and she mentioned it, and it's kind of nice. So, yeah, I may, I'm not sure if I'm going to do 16 colors or whatever I'm going to do, but I may use this palette. I like it. Um, it's, it's a very nice palette. And we have a sample here. I think it looks pretty good. Very good, so I may use that and upgrade to 64 colors. Cool, so I had this, I mean this can be kind of complicated, but let's try it. I mean, what can go wrong, really? So, so this is going to be in time, maybe. So and it's going to be very simple. Uh, volatile. So basically, we're going to measure the peaks. And we add a tick in the timer handle, handler. And, and we can include this as well. And I don't know what. Uh, okay, so I don't know what is the convention and following with the includes. Ah, oh, yeah, I put the corneo here because <laughs> I'm not going to keep using that. But for now, yeah, I'm just putting it all together. I put that aside because I, I was not going to use it. Okay, so so we're going to have a um, uh, style. Uh, or maybe in time because it's going to be run one, right? And it's likely to be this, but not exactly. We're going to change things. So, old handler, new handler. I'm happy with that. So Get protected mode interrupt vector eight. So, uh, so those whatever. 
plus interrupts. There you go. So 21, we're looking for 8. 8 is a bias interrupt. That is the one that updates the, the clock. If I remember. Yeah, okay. Oh, but it's just this is just doing those in those interrupts. Literally? No, no. Yeah. No. It's not doing it. Yeah, it's starting on 21, right? So I guess. Yeah, dust interrupts, which is dust, terminate program. 21 is the interrupt for dust. So, do you have, my friend, the same for... <laughs> yes, you do. Thank you very much. So, interrupt 10. Uh, well, that's bad news, right? If it starts with 10... 13 I have seen Yeah, this is not what we want Hmm Um Sugar and ooh, there you go. The timer interrupt. There you go, there you go. That's what we want. What did I call? Interrupt the script table. Wow. Yeah, but this is kind of like no blah blah blah. Okay, I will check that in the other video. Uh, timer interrupt. Because we need, we want to know the frequency of that, anyway. Um, and maybe search for those, perhaps. Diamond interrupts, is that what we want? Oh, there you go, on the set spectrum. You get an interrupt every frame. There you go. That's how it should be. Um... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So that is going to be what is going to happen, right? In the pop up assistant, there are calls regular intervals. Yeah, then then this number rings a bell. And the latter calls interrupt 1C, which one you should hook into. You hook into this in the standard way. Start the calling on C. It's possible to program blah 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 to find interrupt another frequencies, but uh, but you then need to perform the necessary calculations and change the rules yourself. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Otherwise, you're going to lose sticks. Uh, why is 1C? BIOS. System timer tick. Hmm. Why not this one, my friend? You a stranger from the internet. What is your name? Uh, Stephen King. Well, it's too close to Stephen King. I'm scared now. Actually. Is linked to the documentation of the lorry. There you go, there you go. This is the. So it's copying things from here. 
<laughs> it's, it did just copy that. I mean, a little bit. This, this was AI before AI. There you go. Well, I mean, he wrote that. He has. He must be an intelligent entity or something, right? Okay, cool. Well, he was copying this. Um, but then the same source of information here is doing an example using the using in A instead. Okay. Uh, which one do we trust? So, perhaps we need to invoke ruler I should use in 1C unless I need to reprogram the timer while still keeping the time of day clock running at the proper straight. The ball handler is a blah 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 in IBM PC, IBM PC biases the nice setting by blah 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 blah. See us. 1C. It's zero and about twenty-one. I don't know. I think if we go straight for the for this one, actually, the example is seems to be wrong, right? <laughs> it means something. Okay, interesting. So, selector. Now, do we want to the init the time? Yes, otherwise we can go back to those, right? So... Okay, so... Something like this. And here we oh, this is really cool because it does the chain. So with this case, so basically um with this is getting the protect the monitor vector and it's getting the the handler, right? So we say timer handler is this one. That the only thing it does, it does a tick. And we set the selector, which is my call segment. And this is actually doing a chain already. So... So I can do the set already, but this is, this is managing the chain for, the chain for us, which is great. Unless we need to change the change the uh, the frequency of the timer, uh, I remember doing that actually. When I was doing, I did things with the yeah. I think I I, I changed that frequency to play samples on the sound blaster or something like that. So that's interesting because um, that might this might need to interact with whatever we do to play sound, right? And then any timer and okay, let's do it different. So timer in it. Oh maybe Something like that. Um, so, 
I'm going to change the name. Let's go. So, seven like a three time. It's mm. called timer. Now we, and this is going to be timer. Just, just realized only using that and I wanted to use a different anyway who cares this is just uh, just we're just making a game it doesn't have to be yeah I was thinking the same with the VGA should we respect like using a prefix as a name space we probably don't care. I mean, I'm not going to make a library. You want a library? Go and use Allegro or something like that. Okay, so uh, the other one was I just forgot that, right? but I'm going to change it because it makes me happy. Yeah, I was using a sonar, but then it doesn't work with the... Okay, so... Let's try this. I'm excited. It might even work. So... Okay, I'm going to do all that. This one as well. This one as well. And then we're going to do. I mean. Okay, so we can do. Timer. In it. Exit. Uh, how does it work, actually? Now. At exit. So, timer three. And I wonder. Um, I wonder. So this is stuff can fail, right? So. Um, but at the mode and everything, blah, 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 zero success, no zero failure. Okay, so if mm, this doesn't work, I, I guess we're looking at get. Total contents, maybe? Oh, no. Uh, Get using get protected mode interrupt vector get get protected when I interrupt vector vector <laughs> zero return zero this always works okay. I mean, we can complain about that. And the other one is chain protected. So... Uh, I'm confused. I was expecting this to be in alphabetical order. So... Oh, DF DPMI. Huh? No. Wait a minute. Uh, okay, let's do something different. Let's don't do that. Because this could be another example. Uh, so, the DPMI get 
put it in mode. This always works. You excellent. Uh, DPI. Chain. Okay. So that chain is for the goal thirty two. Hmm. Disappointed. Disappointed. Zero success. So what do I do? I guess we use the goal thirty two versions, right? Uh, so get the demo interrupt vector. Yeah, saying zero success, non zero failure. <laughs> so this one can fail. But this one, this one never fails. Uh, are they in the same include as well? Well, one of them is lying, right? Updated in December 1998. That was a great year, 1998. I remember it perfectly. Okay. So, now this one is cool. But, uh, there is no chain here. Isn't it? Set. Oh no, it says simulate. Oh, what is this? Set extended exception handler. Okay, so we're looking is for set protected mode. Okay, minus one on error. This kind of makes sense, right? So, and the, param and the parameter is DP DPMI. I'm going to use the DP DPMI. I don't, I'm not completely sure I trust the, the other one. Okay, so all handler, a new handler. So, get to the mall, you get the address. Yes, that's good. And the vector. Yes, that's perfect. This always works. All right. And set this one. My fail. Yeah, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see it anyway. Uh... I mean, that's probably the last thing you're going to see before it crashes. And because it's when we exit in, we don't care. Right? Cool. Now, the question is... Set put to the monitor on vector. Hmm. This function is starts a button monitor on not exception highlight. You must pass a selector offset pair. And 
that oh, I need to look at that. Uh, set the offset pair hardware into red where we refer to the no you sell hunter. You must speedy especially stay before I read because I read one this hour restoring the rules in a virtual environment. All right. But there is no chain here. There's chain in Go32. No chain on the other one. Okay. That's fine. I still don't understand how that chain works anyway. Because... Okay, so we are using a DFMI, DPMI, P other, P other, which has offset thirty two, and then has. And it has selector. And we need to get my CS, which is the DPMI um, get something. Okay, fine. Fine, 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 fine. I think we have done something similar, right? In VGA, there was something like uh, DGV. No, that's not what we wanted. So, so that is go my CS. This is kind of interesting. Okay, so that is my CS. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I think that's fine. Now the question is, uh, what do we do with the chain? No, that's not the one. Uh, we going to use the DMP. Uh, so get so get the interpreter, then the set the vector. You must explicitly stay before I read if. Because what? Um, so I guess I need to specify that this is a handler, right? Because this could be doing stuff. Um, okay. So somehow. I need to be able to, to say that this doesn't is an internal, right? This doesn't interrupt. Simulator interrupted the mode. Um, this is simulate the rail mode procedure event. Wow, the segmentation is. It, it 
kind of has a little bit of a smell. Well, the thing is, we have an example with Go32. Shall we use that? Oh, we can also do something. Um, we have Allegro here, so we can do search what they do for the doors and see what they are using. So, style. Yeah. All right, DJ. So install your queue. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, I like it. They use it long. Yeah, pa pa pa. My say yes, yes. So get protected, set protected, the address, and it's going to be handler. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So install air to, okay, this is promising. So set air queue. So bar time handler. This is not doing anything special, I think. Oh, what do we need? What is this? This macro. What do we need? What is that? I say in end of static. Where's that macro? Mm. Confusing. Interesting as well. Confusing as well as interesting. So, mm. fix time handler. Cool. This is pretty much what we want to do. And it looks similar to what we are doing, right? Uh, well, it returns an integer. Is this called? Yeah, well, we don't know what is this. And this is not a repo, so I need to do it like this. Uh, interesting. Is that a macro or something? Okay. Static boy end. Interesting. Okay, so low build timer speed. Nice, nice, very nice. So so fixed. I don't know what is that. So, is that IRQ? <sighs> Bios counter disabled, certain rate, blah blah blah. Well, I mean, it's just adding, right? And it's tracking which one is the Bios. doing uh okay we know about that one so it's doing open to port 
I have bought 21, is that what he's doing? No, it's 20, not 21. Hmm, so close. So I don't know what he's doing here. And then it's enabled interrupts. And this enable, I am going to assume that is going to enable that disable interrupts, but I don't know. Yeah, it's not clear what is going to happen when we do this. So set protected the, the address and it's updating the BIOS, but I think I think we're going to use the goal 32 and if it works if it works I'm going to be happy because I'm not going to know how to call the old interrupt handler and if we don't call it then mm -mm, things could be could go wrong right and we don't want that so yeah but it's also true so this function gives us a maximum function handles the overhead of service and interrupt the use fully address or just a function in the opposite and in both for this function the press with the address of the rubber function with your passport server to the reminder of vector and go sorry what okay okay so this is kind of this is getting really 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 confusing but it's okay so basically we need this so see uh, for now we're going to leave it like that so okay so we're going to call this because we're going to need it and and the handler we're going to do is Okay, so we need this because this is creates a small assembly function that handles the overhead of the visiting the inter to use the address, blah blah blah. The PM here will replace with the address of the wrapper function, which you pass to both the total mode vector and free here wrapper. Perfect. And that is going to do, I assume, in the right thing, right? So, and it's going to be go, go 32 df, uh, yes, and is this instead of the, this one. It's going to be different because it's going to be PM offset. And the selector first. 
but that we're going to go back to example here so npm selector and we're going just to use let's say go 32 my cs and and get protected get okay so go to for go 32 the old handler so we get the old handler we set up the new handler we wrap with the direct wrapper here then we change to the old one and when we go we and do that and we free and let's see if it compiles okay go 32 my cs has to be go 32 ooh, ooh. And oh, and the other problem is because in main we haven't included the timer. Let's put it at the top, the date at the end, and and then that should be okay. Oh, because it sticks, it sticks. Okay. Ah, okay, okay, sorry, my bad, my bad. Alright, undefined reference to peaks. Yeah, because perhaps sticks shouldn't be static if I need to access to it. Maybe I should have a function for that. What? Ah, that's kind of interesting. So it's kind of killing those box. Can I just do game without using call? Ah, it's the same. Well, this is going to be painful, isn't it? Okay, so... Something is not right, so... Okay. Okay, fine. It's going to be zero all the time. Happy with that. So the timer in it is not working. <laughs> and, uh, okay. So get protected more interval vector. Can we just do that? Yes, we can do that. Can we then allocate a wrapper for the handler? 
Yes, that's completely inconsequential, right? Can we... Can we clean up this adjective? Oh, but we need to wait until they finish it with the zeros. So let's make less zeros. Still, too many zeros. Uh, because we're waiting for vsync, so it's counting frames, really. Ten frames. Oh, it didn't seem to to break anything. It didn't look like it. Okay. Uh, uh, how do you get the timing here? <laughs> yeah, I'm not in Linux. But what I'm doing? Uh, no, no idea. Uh, if I run it again, does it crash? No. So that seems to be okay. So it could be that it's breaking into the chain. Right? Well, it's actually calling the timer free, by the way. I like it. So this is not working here. The DFM DPMI. Hello, Zach Willenberg. How are you doing? Sorry if I didn't read your name properly. Um Yeah, it crashes. Good. Here we are, crashing that box. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, and apparently I'm breaking something. But yeah, we'll find out what it is. So what if, what if, what if? Yeah, I'm a Linux, yes. What if we do what the documentation was saying, which is um, well, you were saying two things. Use one, use the other. It doesn't matter. Um, it really doesn't matter. We can get, for example. An interrupter is not in use and nothing happens because it's never called, right? Yeah, fellow open source rhythm, yes. <sighs> so I don't know. So it has to be one of these, is not right. So, which one could it be? So this one is what is doing the wrapper, right? And we have an example here. So 
put the money into the handler and that seems to be okay and chain here okay this function is used to chain a protected mod interrupt it will build a suitable wrapper that will call your function and then jump to the next handler wait a minute Oh, wait a minute, because the way of DB, DBMI works, you might not long jump. Open an interrupt handler, don't long jump. You could not know those anymore and use that might be more helpful than those for you. Mm, yeah, could be. I mean, it should work in those box as well. So, okay, I'm suspecting now that this is not needed. And it is possible that the chain is doing the stuff for us. And it does. So there you go. Don't do things that you don't need to do before you need. Ah, that was my fault. It has a lot more support than DOSBox from what I have seen. You're probably right. I'm not an expert. I don't know. But in reality, you know, I've, I've been always using DOSBox and it should work so if i'm doing something that is not good for those box it's definitely something i should correct because people are going to use those box right and if i make it a game obviously i want the game to work everywhere right now we have super interesting information here because you can see one two three four five one, two, three, four. It's not constant, right? So sometimes we get we get from three to five ticks per um, V-sync of the VGA. I didn't know that. Cool. Well, there you go. Why sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't? Dosbox is optimized for running games, well, across a wide range of platforms, while DOSEMU is optimized for running more standard DOS code on Linux with greater platform integration. Yes, I think I have read exactly that somewhere. Yeah, you're probably right. I will think about that. See, I'm going to, I'm going to, going to follow your advice. And to review, I'm going to put here use those box sorry no you say refer dosemu and we'll see cool i think the timer i think the timer is working now and pretty much it's the same code we saw in the example I didn't like initially. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's late also. So yeah, thank you. Well, I'm just learning. I just thought it would be a, a nice thing to do. You know, I mean, this is really not that relevant anymore, is it? I mean, even Allegro library that was supported supporting DOS for for a long time, they don't support that anymore. The latest version they drop DOS support. So it's you know, but I made I have made games for 8-bit systems, so and those have been out of business for almost 40 years. So it really doesn't matter. It's just learning, having fun, making a game. And so yeah. This looks okay, I think. It's counting the ticks. Um, and it's getting there. So, so I guess now that we know it works, we could be capturing this one, right? And it should work the same. Yes, it does. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, we are not going to reprogram the, the clock. Really. I don't know. I mean, it's not going to be... It's never going to be great, this one, because... I don't know, we probably need to, to change... Cool. I probably need to change... I don't know if this is useful, really. Because it doesn't have enough resolution, right? So what, what I do in the in the eight bit systems is for example if I, because you get an in, an interrupt for example if you're in PAL region you get an interrupt every you know fifty times per second and because you know there are eight bit machines you can do many things in in that's what the the video takes to draw a frame right. So it's not going to be, you're not going to have a lot of time to do a lot of things. So usually what you do is you divide that by, by a number. So if you come to frames, you basically update your game at 25 frames per second. Uh, 25 times per second. Or 3 and it's 16, right? Uh, but this one is, is already going to give me a granularity of 18.2. So, it's not going to be useful, really. Hmm. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Because this is 10 per second. It's not enough, I think. I think I will need milliseconds. For this to work, and this is not enough. So I would have to do similarly to what Allegro is doing here. Um, so well, I mean, now that we know a little bit more, so. Get to the mode, set to the mode, the new address. And the address is coming. So basically, it tracks all the interrupt handlers here. And, and it keeps the old vector. vector. And here it, it restores vector. And then you have wrappers. Find somewhere. And here. What they do is set the delay time for pitch channel 1 to one shot mode in cycle mode you say the rate so with this they can make this is how you refer on the the clock to give you more frequency and the fixed timer handler
to this accounter and then you need to update the time whatever so this is actually doing the updating the, the clock of the virus it's as simple as that so you need to take the virus you say virus is true and if not just end the intro Anyway, I need to think about this um, because this is not going to be super useful, I think. Yeah, and also it's quite interesting that, so I'm using the old interface with Go32. Um, that it provides the chain while the, the new interface doesn't have that. And also it doesn't have allocate. It doesn't have It doesn't look like have the same thing to uh, get a wrapper for the interrupt, so you probably need to do it yourself. Um, there is some some information about this. Accessing video memory. Um, Okay, um, how to hook hardware interrupts? To start with the monitor, how do you do this? In general, you handle your written assembly to be able to provide. You should lock all the memory, code that and stack. And could be touched by your handle to it into pressing. Blah 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 blah. Finally call. Finally call. Then be separated into a vector to press a pointer. We fill the values. My CS selector field. Blah blah. Your handle function is written in C. Is your generally call. They go to do function instead the very ones they pay rubbers the name to start the Ah ah so we're doing it currently now because you use the wrappers because it's written in C. Aha. You call get protected, this function puts the vector offset, blah blah blah, and separate the mode to restore vector and exit. Yes, we're doing that. Are we doing that? Yes, we're doing that. Check out the video to do this. Sad face. Call allocate direct wrapper. Uh, then you call blah blah blah. Set info. If you want your handler to change to the previous handler, call go DMP DM DPM DPMI. Chain protect, uh, chain protect the mode. This will set up a wrapper function when called into the PM selector field. Da, 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 da. Start to pass the point to the function to this function. And okay, so wrapper internally. Okay, so you need to do anything. And also, range the intro to call your handler. So you need to call. So you don't need to call, which is what I was trained to do. And if you say put an intro vector function yourself. Oh, you don't. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I was not doing the second one. I also know that currently chain doesn't return to you the address of the wrapper yet, okay? So that wrapper cannot be freed by your program. It will be freed by DJ GPP exit code. So, so this issue is only a concern to brands that are okay and free those arrivals. 
The problem with writing handlers in C I suppose is that the pra in practice you can lock all the memory the handler itself uses because there is no standard way of finding the size of the code a C function. All the rest of the stack used by C code. This approach is generally unsuitable for production quality software and should be used only when the program is known to not page. Only the physical memory is used. You may consider disabling virtual memory to make sure your program doesn't pitch. One piece is a reset the uh, or use RI. Okay, we saw that, right? Well, it's okay. Uh, I don't think we're going to have. Okay. It's okay. I, I don't think we're going to use that much memory that is going to be paid, but so. So flat log memory. Um, another possibility is to the memory by using cursor and using this. Yeah, no, this is fine. Is it going to work? Yeah. All right. So I'm happy with that. I'm not sure about this at all. I don't think the. I mean, okay. Um, because the browser got the free wrappers, but pa 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 pa. Additional configuration, through handler C. No, because we're not going to use that. Yeah, that's fine. So recommended for smart programs that run on a machine where no physical memory is always available. Okay, we are not going to swap into this anyway because the start of code currently doesn't test if memory is in that locker there's no enough physical memory inside the page all the memory your program needs you can end up with unlock or partially unlocked memory which will crash your program if you want to make sure the memory is locked you send in the server with disabled paper buffers in conventional memory functionality mm, components generally need not to be locked since the most of the server is locked to us memory by default Save code, you could try to load them in the call to ah, 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 ah. fine. So maybe we should be installing installing on a real mode. But you copy the handler into the last memory. Hmm. No way, that's you know interesting. Not the Windows 95. It's what we call a button and VMP in the handles if both are initialized. Yeah, we don't care. Mm. So it's feasible in the rules are special. Mm. Well, this sucks. I don't like it. It's going to be a problem. Ah, it's going to be a problem. Hmm. So, can I counter? Uh, so, I don't think we can use the timer. So, this is not useful. Uh, it may be useful for the keyboard because uh, for the keyboard, we may want to. Yeah, for the, for the keyboard, we're going to do that, actually, I think, I think. 
I mean, looking at, for example, what this thing does, little game engine. Um, so it has an interrupt handler for the keyboard. Oh, wait, there was something funny to say. They've been special, the server interrupts are special. Alright, so get reflected and put it in more handler. This interrupts are the thermal clock interrupt. Okay. The keyboard break interrupt. Okay. And the critical error means that the cast is interrupt, you need to start a protector mode handler only. Unlike how interrupts, does it make sense to install the dual PM? Uh, protector mode and real mode. A particular windows will call both. Okay, okay, okay. So, so the timer tick is the one we want to handle then. So and this is the one we handle it fine. So that's the only one, that's the one that it will work in protected. Yeah, but it's kind of silly because the frequency is not what we want anyway. So I don't know. I need to think about that. So that's one thing to, to think about. So So why we need to review because the peak is that the one? Uh... Hey, Pan speaking kids and your party of two. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for the raid. So, yeah. So, I think that frequency of optic, I'm not sure if it's going to be useful or anything at all, really. Um, so, I need to review the use of the timer. Do I want to keep what I've been doing today? We probably want to keep this. Um, the code to test the, the timer, we can keep it, actually, we can keep this the way it was, and this has to be at the beginning, before setting the BGA, right? And we don't need the rest, so... So this should work exactly the same. And it was working. Yeah, cool. I mean, we can just... Hey. Uh, in protected mode. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, ticks. Sorry. Yes, it is in protected mode. Okay, so. And tick is one hundred fifty-two. Excellent. So I'm going to yeah, let me read again what I did today with the ticks. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. I think it's absolutely fine. Although it's possible that we are not going to use it. So uh yeah, oh, ticks. And then in the two, we have a couple of things. We just try to go in. I don't know why I included the to do in the 
in the repo because I, I don't I don't like it but anyway cool so today has been kind of okay like uh, we had some book fixes at the beginning uh, so with the palette and the binary uh, embedding the binary data in the in the X in the exit um, that we couldn't finish last time and the vsync for the VGA works fine so I'm happy with that yeah that's right actually in fact um, it's not it's not the one I'm using at the moment so I'm using the new the new new because why is from 98 96 <laughs> CWSDPMI. So that one is a new one, but there is still an API with Go32 that is higher level. So um, when you install an interrupt handler in protected mode, it has high level functions like this one that it does the chaining of the interrupts for you. So I didn't have to do anything in reality. The only thing I had to do is say, get the old handler. And actually, I probably don't need the old handler now. I'm thinking. No, yes, I do. See, so this one, we get the old handler, but the chain is the one that is um, setting my handler and calling the old one after mine is run. And the old hand that I got here is the one I set at the end. I'm not completely sure about this. I've, this one, this is may not be needed at all because it's saying here that uh, if you want your handler to change to the previous handler, Call go32 blah 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 chain protected mode. This is set up. This will set up a, a wrapper function which, when called, will call your handler. Then jump to the previous handler after your handler returns. Put the address of your handler into the blah blah blah. Correct. Um, sorry. Uh, CS. Uh, blah blah blah. Okay. So the image chain protected interval vector allocates the wrapper internally and also arranges the interval call to call your handler so you need not to call fine and and yeah any other one correct also note that currently chain protected mode interval vector doesn't return to you the address of the wrapper you allocate so that wrapper cannot be freed by your program it will be freed by the GTA. so i think it frees the wrapper but i still need to set the all vector so we clean everything nicely when we go back to those. Um, so yeah, that's why I was using Go32. In fact, I spent a lot of time today trying to use the other one, but then I realized that it's lower level and it doesn't make the wrapper or, or the chain of the interrupts. So, I think I'm going to use Go32 anyway. The API is the same and it's stable, it's not going to change if it's been like that for, I don't know, 25 years, whatever. So, uh, cool. So that's good. Um, I think the same strategy can be used for the keyboard. So when a key is pressed or released, we get an interrupt. Yeah, that sounds correct. but. but uh, does the PM more better, which will soon be on install when returning to DOS, but still it's better to clean it up. Uh, yeah, I mean, you might be right. Shall we? I mean, I can try it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going, what are we going to say? See if this doesn't work, right? Okay, so if I don't exit here and I, and I try it now. I mean, in reality, I don't expect anyone to run the game and then go back to those and do things with it, right?
I don't see a problem. I will leave it anyway, so you maybe it does the not even shut down. Yeah. I mean, but it's a it's a good point. Uh, so it may not, it may not be needed really. Um, but anyway, the example I was getting from the documentation here, it does release the internal handler. So it's doing it. It's also calling here tick handler, and then it's called timer handler here. So it may not be correct. Who knows? Anyway, uh, I think this is going to be all for today. Um, two, hour, two hours and a half, a little bit longer than usual, but cool. I think it's been very interesting and I, I have learned a few things today. Unexpected, really. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do next day. Uh, I mean, now that I'm dealing with handlers and stuff, maybe it's a good time to do the keyboard. Uh, but we'll see. Good night to you as well, and spinning kits, and thank you for the raid, by the way. Yeah, so probably uh, the keyboard is a good candidate for next time. Uh, other than that, I mean, I'm running out of things to do, really. So if I find how to measure time better than the the tick or see if you know this tick handler is good enough uh, otherwise i need to find a better way of doing it and other than that is the software blitter is the blitter i need to find out if i'm going to do double buffer with hardware i need to find out how to do it and and just do it and that's pretty much it i mean when we had when we have the tick, we, when we can measure time, we have the blitter and the keyboard. I can start making the game, really, because everything else, the sound is something I can add later. So those are the basic components. Drawing, time, input, and then this is just working on the game, really. So yeah, get in there. Anyway, bye now.